recording. Barack Yahuwah. Barack Yahuwah. If you're taking notes, as Abba has us on a journey, preparing us, this indeed is the road to Sukkot. Uh, but this is far larger than the road to Sukkot. Uh, we, we are identifying Sukkot because we are anticipating a great move of Yahuwah at Sukkot. Uh, but there are even two more feasts before Sukkot. We, we look forward to Yom Tororah, the Feast of Trumpets. And indeed, indeed we look forward to uh, Yom HaKippurim, the Day of Atonement. But we've been, we've been talking about Sukkot because um, indeed we are expecting a great move of Yahuwah at, at Sukkot. Because we believe that he is preparing a people. He's preparing a remnant uh, for an end time work, for a latter day work, for a latter rain work. Uh, he's preparing a remnant, a special people whom he, has, whom he has hidden right now. Whom he has hidden. And this is a special people. And this, this special people has certain characteristics. Uh, there are certain characteristics that are expected of this people. That he has hidden. And, and Abba Yahuwah has been trying to, for whomever has eyes to see and ears to hear, trying to get us to align ourselves with those specific characteristics, which are his characteristics, so that we are prepared to receive some of his bright nature. Indeed, we're going to need that bright nature in order to operate in these end times. We're going to need that bright nature. We're going to need to be able to be indeed visible images of the invisible Elohim. And so in continuing this walk, in continuing this preparation, this preparation for greater works, this preparation for greater works, this prepar work, preparation for uh, a latter rain anointing, Nakai Gashan. Uh, this preparation for a work in which he has ordained before the foundation of the earth and before the stretching forth of Hashemayim. In preparation of this work, we continue on this path today. And if you're taking notes, uh, the title of this teaching is Searching for the Ancient Path. Searching for the Ancient Path. Searching for the ancient path. Barak Yahuwah. Barak Yahuwah. There's much to say. There's much to say about the ancient path. Much to say about it. And when many speak about the ancient path, uh, they, they, they want to automatically bring in something deep. They automatically want to bring in something deep and spiritual to the conversation. Off the top, they automatically want to bring something deep and spiritual to the conversation of the ancient path. Of the ancient path. Well, Abba wants us to look into the ancient path. He wants us to look into this. Uh, and this teaching uh, may not be completed on this day. It uh, very well may not be completed on this day. If it starts to go too long, then we're going to cut it off and perhaps we'll, we'll, we'll continue it either on the fourth day or next Shabbat. But it may very well not be completed on this day. But we're going to look into this. We're going to search for the ancient past because Abba wants us to search for them. He wants us to search for the ancient path. But before we get into this teaching, before we get into this, turn to 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2. Um, this is not so much a part of the teaching, but this, this, this is kind of uh, opening up the segue to the teaching. This is kind of opening up the segue uh, to this teaching. 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2. And uh, I'm going to read verses 1 through 3. 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. Listen. Having put aside then all evil and all deceit, and hypocrisies, and envyings, and all evil words, listen, as newborn babes, as newborn babes, I pray that you underline that, underline newborn babes, highlight newborn babes, make it bold, make it a talent, 
on whatever you need to do to bring attention to newborn babes. As newborn babes desire the unadulterated milk of the word in order that you grow by it, if indeed you have tasted that the master is good, if indeed that if, if indeed you have tasted that the master is good. Indeed, I began speaking, or Abba began speaking through me uh, that when we're talking about the ancient past, indeed, when we're talking about most things with respect to scripture, uh, nearly everyone in this season, as knowledge has increased, nearly all are looking for the deep things. They're looking for the deep matters, for the deep things. But what most cannot understand is that the deep things are found in the simple things. The deep things are found in the simple things of Yahuwah. The pure milk of the word. The pure milk of the word. You see, he wants us to be childlike. Childlike. And just to simply drink the life-giving milk. To simply drink the life-giving milk. Don't try to uh, over uh, <laughs> overcomplicate it. Don't try to always look for the deep thing. If you're looking for the deep thing, he's not going to reveal it to you. Because you're looking for it for the wrong reason. But if you're just simply childlike. And are just simply satisfied as a child is with just a bottle of milk. With the pure, unadulterated milk of the word, he will reveal deep things within the simple things. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Turn to James. James chapter 1. Indeed, we're still building the case. We're still opening up a segue to the teaching. We haven't gotten there yet. Still opening up a segue to the teaching. James chapter 1. James chapter 1. Everyone is looking for the deep matter, for the deep matter. But Yahuwah, <laughs> he just wants us to just simply obey him with childlike abandon. That's what he's looking for. And if he finds that, then in the simple things, he will reveal deep things to you. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. James chapter 1, verse 21 through 25. Therefore, put away all filthiness and overflow of evil and receive with meekness, with meekness, like a childlike meekness, the implanted word, which is what? Which is able to save your lives and become doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. I mean, let, let's get back to the basics. And become doers of the word. Most are not even doers of the word. They're looking for the deep things. Looking for the deep matters. They can't even walk in the door from. Uh, they can't walk in the door without kicking over a book. There's nothing wrong with books. But you're not going to find Yahuwah in a book. You're not going to find them there. You're not going to find everlasting life in book. Indeed, Yahusha spoke to the Pharisees. He says, you search the scriptures because you think they contain, they contain life. But you don't understand that the scriptures speak about me. They're looking for the deep things. But the living word was standing right in front of them. Had they understood the simple things, the simple things, they would have understood the deep thing that was standing right in front of them. But they were looking for the deep things, looking for the deep things where uh, in the meantime, the uh, the simple things are hidden from them and not understanding that in the simple things is hitting the deep things. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Listen, because if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks at his natural face in a mirror for he looks at himself and goes away. And immediately forgets what he was like. But he that looked into the perfect Torah. But he that looked into the perfect Torah. That of freedom. And continues in it. Not becoming a hearer that forgets. But a doer of work. 
of obedience. This one shall be Baruch in his doing of the Torah. Not the one who's seeking the deep matters, but the one who is like a babe, sucking upon the pure, unadulterated milk of the word and being a doer of it and not simply a hearer. Turn to Matthew chapter 11. We're still, I'll be still building the case before, uh, before we get into the teaching. Matthew chapter 11, verse 25 through 26. Matthew chapter 11, verse 25 and 26. Matat Yahu, chapter 11, verses 25 and 26. Beginning at verse 25. At that time, Yahushua responding, saying, I thank you, Father, Master of the Shamayim and Arach. Because you have hidden these matters from the clever and learned ones. From the clever and learned ones. And have revealed them to babes. Those that are just satisfied with the simple milk of the word. With the simple milk of the word. Who, who hunger and thirst as I beloved I read in Matat Yahu chapter 5. Who hunger and thirst for righteousness. What is righteousness? Righteousness, if you read the book, if you read the book and understand the book, righteousness is the word. Righteousness is Torah. Righteousness is Ruk. So the, 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 the simple things, uh, the, the, the hidden things are hidden. You, he is hidden from the clever and the learned ones. And have revealed them to babes who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Who hunger and thirst for the pure milk of the word. We're still talking about the ancient past. We're talking about the ancient past because the ancient past are hidden. We don't see the ancient past. They're hidden. They're hidden. But Abba wants us to search for them. But he wants babes to search for the ancient past. Not one who's searching for knowledge. Not one who's searching for knowledge, who's puffed up by knowledge and prideful by knowledge, but a babe, a babe who just wants to drink upon the simple, pure, unadulterated milk of the word. It is these who he reveals the ancient past to. It is these who he reveals the ancient past to. Yes, Father, because so it was well-pleasing in your sight. One more scripture building the case before we get into the teaching. One more scripture building the case before we get into the teaching. 1 Corinthians, the first chapter. Turn to Corinthians, the first chapter. 1 Corinthians, the first chapter. 1 Corinthians, the first chapter. Barak Yahuwah. 1 Corinthians, the first chapter. There is much, much, much puffed upness in the house, in Abba's house right now. But there's very little obedience. There's, there, there's very little that are just hungering for the pure, unadulterated milk of the word. And so they're only giving Abba lip service. They're neither walking the ancient past, nor has the ancient past been revealed to them. Because they're looking for the deep things so that they can have a platform. There, there's no shortage of so-called teachers on Facebook. Everybody wants to be a teacher. Everybody wants a platform. There's no shortage of so-called teachers on YouTube. Everybody wants to teach. Everybody wants a platform. But if you listen to the words of Yakub, not many of you should become teachers knowing that we should knowing that we shall receive a stricter or a harsher judgment. But they, they bypass this, they reject this because they are more concerned with the praises and the accolades of men looking for the deep things. So someone can come and pat them on the back and say, oh, that was deep, Ak. That was deep, Akuti. Oh, that was deep. That was real deep. We don't know nothing deep. We don't know anything. We don't know anything. Nothing that we think we know. What, what we perceive as deep is childlike to Yahuwah. It's childlike. We don't know anything. We don't know anything. So he's calling us back to the ancient past. And the way back to the ancient past is to be childlike. To be childlike. And to 
thirst, hunger and thirst for the pure, unadulterated milk of the word. And to be childlike is to be what? It's to be meek and humble like a little child. Meek and humble like a little child. Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18 through 31. Verses 18 through 31. For the word of the stake is indeed foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being delivered, but to us who are being delivered. You see, we're playing this thing out. We're, we're, we're walking the ancient path. If you're on the ancient path, we're walking the ancient path and we are being delivered. None of us are delivered. Christianity messed us up. Ain't none of us delivered. Ain't none of us delivered. Indeed. What are we being delivered from? We're being delivered from death. We're being delivered from death. And so it's important to understand this so the stench of death is not still on you. We're being delivered from death. We're being delivered from death to life. This is what we're being delivered from. And it, it, is, it, is, it, is, it is written that all must die once. And then the judgment. It is appointed upon man to die once and then the judgment. Barak Yahuwah. We're being delivered from death. We are being delivered. None of us are delivered. None of us have made it anywhere yet. So it is, it is incumbent upon us to search for these ancient paths. To pray to Abba to reveal these ancient paths to us. And to hunger and thirst for his word with childlike abandon. To hunger and thirst for the pure milk of the word. So that we may be fed. And so that we may live, Barak Yahuwah. For the word of the stake is indeed foolishness to those who are perishing. But to, the, but, but, but to us who are being delivered, it is the power of Elohim. For it has been written, listen, I shall destroy the kakma of the kaka and put aside the learning of the learned ones. Where is the kaka? Where is the scholar? Where is the debater of this age? Has not Elohim made foolish the kakma of this world? For since in the kakma of Elohim, the world through kakma, which is to say prudence, did not know Elohim, it pleased Elohim through the foolishness of preaching to save those who believe. And since Yahudi asked a sign and Greeks see kakma, Yet we proclaim Mashiach impaled to the Yahudim a stumbling block and to the Greeks foolishness. But to those who are called both Yahudim and Greeks, Yabanim, Mashiach, the power of Elohim and the Kakma of Elohim. This is very key to this teaching. Underline this. Underline this. Underline this. Both Yahudim and Yabanim, Greeks, Mashiach, the power of Elohim, and the Kakma of Elohim, and the Kakma of Elohim. For the foolishness of Elohim is more prudent than men, and the weakness of Elohim is stronger than men. For look at your calling brothers, that there were not many cockum or prudent according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble. This, such as these, is whom he chooses. Such as these is whom he chooses. But Elohim has chosen the foolish matters of the world to put to shame the cockum, the cockum. And Elohim has chosen the weak of the world to put the shame, the strong. And Elohim has chosen the lowborn of the world and the despised and the ones that are not, that he might bring to naught the ones that are, so that no flesh should boast in his presence. And of him you are in Mashiach, Yahusha, who became, listen, underline this, who became for us kakma. Who became for us kakma from Elohim. Righteousness also. Underline this as well. Righteousness also. And separateness. And separateness. 
and redemption. That as, that, that as it has been written, he who boasts, let him boast in Yahuwah. Let him boast in Yahuwah. Barak Yahuwah. Barak Yahuwah. I had to read that just to open up a segue for the teaching, searching for the ancient path. Searching for the ancient path. Searching for the ancient path. In John, the 14th chapter, verse 6, Ms. Parker, and we're going to read John, Yahukunan, chapter 14, verses 1 through 6. We're going to read Yahukunan, John 14, chapter, uh, verses 1 through 6. But in verse 6, in verse 6, it says something there very important. Very important. It says there, I am the way, the truth, and the kai, the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life, the kai. He says, I am. He says, I am. Ahaya. Ahaya. He says, I am. Ahaya. I am what? I am the all existent one. I am the all-existent one. This is what Ahaya means. It means the all-existent one. So he says, I am. I am the all-existent one. I am. I am the all-existent one. And I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the way. I am the way. Let's look at Yahukun in chapter 14, verses 1 through 6. It says here, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in Elohim, believe also in me. In my father's house are many staying places. And if not, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, listen here, because this is another text. I know we're not Christians. We are, we are called out ones, but this is one that they like to use to prove that they're going to heaven, that they're going to their legion fields. That's a lie from the pit of Shaul. Listen very carefully. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I shall come again and receive you to myself. When is he coming again? During the millennial reign. During the millennial reign. This is when he's coming again to receive us to himself. This is when he co he's coming again to receive us to himself. Barak Yahuwah. Barak Yahuwah. We just have to read with understanding, with childlike abandon. With childlike abandon. If we read like children, he'll reveal it to us. I shall come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, you might be too. And where I go, you know. And the way, you know. Duma said to him, Master, we do, not, we do not know where you are going. And how are we able to know the way? Yahushua said to him, I am the way. I am the way. Now the Greek here, many of you know I don't like Greek. But for the sake of uh, adding context to this text. He says here, I am the way. And way is the Greek. Uh, number uh, Strong's number 3598 and it is the Greek word hodos, uh, hodos, hodos, H-O-D-O-S, H-O-D-O-S, hodos. And it means the way, it means a road, a road. Indeed, we're talking about the ancient path. Yes, we are. We're talking about the ancient path. It means hodos, a road. By implication, a progress, a progress. I pray you're listening. A progress. Indeed, we're being delivered as we walk the ancient path. The route at or distance. The route at or distance. So the way here is hodos. Way is hodos, and it is a road. A road. By implication, a progress. The route at or difference. So he says, I am the way. And the way again is hodos. And the truth. And the truth, the Greek word here for truth is Greek Strong's number 225, 225. And it is the Greek, Auli Thea, Auli Thea, Auli Thea. And it means truly, in truth, according to truth, according to truth. He says, I am the way and the truth and the life, the life. The Greek word here for life is the Greek Strong's number, Greek 2222. And it is the Greek word zo. Zo. Uh, it means life figuratively or literally. 
or literally, it means life. No one comes to the Father except through me. No one comes to the Father except through me. Now let's explore this. Let's explore this. First, let's take a look. Let's break this down and let's look at the way. Let's look at the way. He says, I am the way. He says, I'm a road. I am a road. I, I am the way. I am hodos. I am a road. By implication, a progress. The route, the route at or distance. I am the way. I am the road. I am. Mm. Oh, but don't let me get ahead. I am the road. So let's look at the way. Let's look at the way. Look at Proverbs 6.23. Look at Proverbs 6.23. Mashal. Proverbs 6.23. We're looking at the way. We're looking at the way. Looking at the way. Proverbs 6.23. What does it say here? For the command is a lamp. And the Torah, a light, and reproofs of discipline, a way, a way of Kai, a way of Kai. I pray you're already getting the connection. Tahalim, let's look at Tahalim, Psalms 119.1. Tahalim, a Psalms 119.1. Tahalim. Tahalim of Psalms, 119, the 119 Psalms, verse 1, verse 1, the 119th Psalm, Tahalim, verse 1. Listen, Ashar, or glad, glad are the perfect in the way, in the way, who walk, what? Who walk in the Torah of Yahuwah, who walk in in the Torah of Yahuwah. So the text has declared by the mouth of two or more witnesses that the way is Torah. The road is Torah. The road is Torah. Does it get deeper? Yes, it gets deeper, but we're going to explore the simple matter so that we can understand the deep matters. Barak Yahuwah. We're going to, we're going to explore the simple matters so that we understand the deep matters. We're going to take the pure, unadulterated milk of the word so that he reveals the deep matters to us. Barak Yahuwah. Let's look at the truth. Let's look at the truth. And the truth, again, is the Greek, 225, and it is alithia, 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 and it means truly in truth according to the truth. Let's explore truth. Let's explore truth. Turn to Tahalim of uh, Psalms, one, the 119th Psalm, the 142nd verse. Psalms, Tahalim, the 119th Psalm, the 142nd verse. The 142nd verse. Tahalim of Psalms, 119, 142. It reads, your righteousness is righteousness forever. And your Torah is truth. And your Torah is truth. Tahalim 119, 151. Tahalim 119, 151. You are near, O Yahuwah. And all your commands, matzpah, or mitzpah, mitzpah, all your commands are truth. All your words, all your instructions, all your Torah ut are truth. Our truth. Tahalim, Psalms 119, 160. 160. Tahalim of Psalms 119, 160. Indeed, he says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the light. Indeed, the way we have discovered is what? Is a road. It is a road. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. The way is a road. But now we're looking at truth. He is the way, the truth, and the life, the Kai. Tahalim, Psalms 119, 160. Listen, the sum of your word is truth, and all your righteous right rulings are forever, are forever. Underline forever because this word here is Aulam. 
Aulam. It is the Abarit word Aulam. We're going to explore this further later on in this teaching. Aulam. Aulam. The sum of your word is truth, and all your righteous right rulings are forever. Aulam. Aulam. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Turn back now to the Bayit Kadashah, to John, a Yahukan in chapter 17, verse 17. Yahukan and a John, verse, chapter 17, verse 17. Yahukanan, John, chapter 17, verse 17. It reads here, set them apart in your truth. Again, this is Greek, two, two, Greek strongs, 225, and it is Ali Fiia. Ali Fi Ali Fiia. Ali Fiia. Fiia. And again, it means truth. Truth. Set them apart in your truth. Your word. And this is the word here for the Greek word here for word is Greek Strong's 3056. And it is in the Greek logos. 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 A word. Uttered by a living voice. A word uttered by a living voice. What someone has said. The sayings of Allahim. The sayings of Allahim. So it says here, set them apart in your truth. Alithia. Your word, logos, a word uttered by a living voice. What someone has said. Um, and it also says the sayings of Yahuwah. The sayings of Allahim, your word is truth. Your word is truth. So we can deduce here that the word that Hamashiach is speaking of here is Torah. It is Torah. Torah is truth. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Torah is the only truth. Everything else is falsehood. He wants us to come to the simple unadulterated pure milk of Torah of Torah here is where the ancient paths can be found here is where the ancient path can be found Torah is truth everything else is falsehood everything else is falsehood he wants us meditating on the Torah day and night he doesn't want us talk, meditating on the deep things every, day and night. He doesn't want us meditating on the Abari tongue day and night, or the Greek tongue day and night. Are they important to bring about the context of the word? Yes, they are. But his command is that we meditate on the Torah day and night. This is what we're commanded to do. It's meditate on the Torah day and night. Because in the Torah is where we find life. And the Torah is where we find the ancient path. This is where we find the ancient path. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. So he says here, set them apart in your truth. Your word. Your word is true. Your word is true. In the beginning in John 14, verses 1 through 6, in particular, verse 6, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the way, the truth. And the life. I am the way, the truth, and the light. Indeed, the word is Torah. And I'm, I'm, I'm emphasizing this because I'm also recording this for YouTube. And if perhaps Abba sends a Christian, he will beyond now a shadow of a doubt reveal to this person that the word is Torah. When the Hamashiach was speaking these words out here that are written in the Ba'if Kadashah, the Ba'it Kadashah did not even exist at this time. It didn't exist. The only thing that existed was the word, which is Torah, which is Torah. Psalms 119, 105. Tahalim 119, 105. Line by line, precept by precept, here a little, there a little, searching for the ancient paths via the pure, unadulterated milk of the word. Tahalim of Psalms 119, 105. 119, 105. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Now, we just read in 
Psalm, I'm sorry, in Proverbs 6.23, for the command is a lamp and a Torah a light and reproofs of discipline a way of life. Indeed, Torah is light. Word, the word is Torah. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path and a light to my path. Now, indeed, I know my family that are listening here understand this, but we are we are we are drinking now the pure, unadulterated milk of the word. And I pray that when someone listens to this later on YouTube, that you will, beyond a shadow of a doubt, understand that the word is Torah, that the word is Torah. Indeed, when when Malak Dawood here in the 119th Psalm, the 105th verse was speaking of speaking of the word, speaking of it as a lamp to his feet and a light to his path. What word was he talking about? The Bar'i Kadashah did not exist at that time. It did not exist even during the time of the Hamashiach and his taught ones. What word is he talking about that is a lamp unto his feet and a light unto his path? Turn to Deuteronomy, the 17th chapter. Dabarim, the 17th chapter. Indeed, we're still exploring the ancient path. He says, I am the way which is a road. I am the way, which is a road, which is a road. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Barak Yahuwah. Barak Yahuwah. Dabarim, chapter 17, verse 14 through 20. Let's explore this word that Malak Dawood was talking about. When you come to the land which Yahuwah, your Elohim, has given you, and shall possess it, and shall dwell in it, and you shall say, let me set a sovereign over me, like all the nations that are around me. You shall certainly set a sovereign over you, whom Yahuwah, your Elohim, shall choose. Set a sovereign over you from among your brothers. You are not allowed to set a foreigner over you who is not your brother. Only he is, only he is not to increase horses for himself, nor cause the people to return to Mashraim to increase horses for Yahuwah has said to you, do not return that way again. And he is not to increase wives for himself, lest his heart turn away, nor is he to greatly increase silver and gold for himself. And it shall be when he sits on the throne of his reign, that he shall write for himself a copy of this Torah, that he shall write for himself a copy of this Torah in a book, in a safar. From the one before the Kahani, which is to say priest, the Luin, and it shall be with him, and he shall read it all the days of his life, so that he learns to revere Yahuwah his Elohim, and guard all the words of this Torah, and these laws to do them, so that his heart is not lifted up above his brothers, and so as not to turn aside from the command right or left, so that he prolongs his days, so that he prolongs his days in his reign, and he he and his children in the midst of Yahshua all. This is the word that Dawood, Malak Dawood is talking about here when he says here in Tahalim 119, 105, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Indeed, are we not talking about the ancient path? Yes, we are. Yes, we are. We're talking about the ancient path. Indeed, Yahushua says, I am the way, which is a road. We've already established that Torah is the way. Torah is the way. Torah is the truth. Torah is the way and Torah is the truth. Torah is also what? The light that what? That keeps us on the ancient path. Torah is also the light that lightens the way. It lightens our path. It keeps us on the path of righteousness. It keeps us on the ancient path. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. So not only is Torah the way and Torah is the light, Torah, uh, is, Torah is the way and Torah is the truth, but Torah is also the light. It is also the light that lights the path. It is also the light that lights the ancient path. Indeed, the word is Torah and Torah is truth. Torah is truth. And so Yahushua says there that I am the way, 
the truth, and the life. We have deduced in this now that Torah is also the word. Torah and the word are synonymous. And that Torah is light. And that Torah is truth. And that Torah is the way. And that Torah is the way. Turn now to John. Yahukun in chapter 1, verse 1 through 14. John chapter 1, verse 1 through 14. Yahukun and John chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. Yahukun and John chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. We've got to get back to the basics, to the pure, unadulterated milk of the word. If we expect to find the ancient path, this is what we've got to get to and not look for the deep things. The deep things indeed are found in the simple things. We've got to get back to the unadulterated milk of the word, the life sustaining milk of the word. It is here where we find life. And it is here where we will find the ancient path. John chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. In the beginning was the word, was Torah. In the beginning, in the beginning was the Torah. In the beginning, in the beginning was the Torah. Indeed, we're talking about the ancient path. Do you understand? We're talking about the ancient path. Yahushua says he is the Torah. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Here it says that in the beginning was the Torah. We're talking about the ancient path. In the beginning was the Torah. And the Torah was with Elohim. And the Torah was Elohim. Barak Yahuwah. He was in the beginning with Elohim. All came to be through him, through Torah, through the speaking of Torah. Indeed, whatever he spoke was Torah because whatever he spoke was an instruction and whatever he spoke came into existence because when he spoke, what, when he spoke, uh, it had no choice but to obey his voice. It had no choice but to obey his voice. He spoke, he spoke in eternity into the natural when the natural didn't even exist and the natural which did exist still had to obey his voice. Everything must obey Torah. Everything must obey Torah. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. He was in the beginning. Torah was in the beginning with Elohim. We're talking about the ancient path. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. All came to be through him. And without him, without Torah, without Torah, all came to be through Torah, through the instructions of Yahuwah. Yes, it did. Yes, it did. And without Torah, not even one came to be that came to be. In Torah, in him was life. I pray you understand it. In him, in Torah was life, was Kai. And the life and the Kai was the light of men. Indeed, we just read in Proverbs 6.23 that Torah is light. And the light and the Torah shines in the darkness. Indeed, it lightens our path. It keeps us in the ancient path, in the path of righteousness. So why? So that we do not stumble in darkness, in lawlessness, in Torahlessness. The pure, unadulterated milk of the word. Oh, I love it. I love the pure milk of the word. I love it. I can't get enough of it. I don't need the deep things. Just, 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 just feed me with the pure, unadulterated milk of the word. I'm a child anyway, and I got a child like mine. So, so, so he has to deal with me like a child from a childlike perspective. He talks to me in a, in a special kind of way because I'm a child. I am his child and he speaks with, he, he deals with me simply, simply because I look for the pure, unadulterated milk of the word and the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from Elohim whose name was Yahukanan. This one came for a witness, to bear witness of the Torah. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. Thank you, Abba, for dealing with me so simply. To bear witness of the Torah, of the light, that all might believe through the Torah, through the Torah. Indeed, 
How? <laughs> oh, Barak Yahuwah. Barak Yahuwah. Oh, Barak Yahuwah. How, <laughs> how should they believe without having heard? Believe what? Believe the Torah. They've got to hear the Torah in order, in order to believe the Torah. Shaul talks about this in Romans 10. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. The, the, the taught ones talk about this in Acts chapter 15. For from ancient times, the, the reading of Masha is read on the Shabbat, the Torah. This is how we gain understanding. This is how we gain belief, by hearing the Torah. This is how we gain belief in him, in the Torah. Who is the Torah? Yahusha. He was not that light, the Torah, but, he, but that he might bear witness of that light, of the Torah. He was the true light, the Torah, which enlightens every man. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Coming into the world. He was in the world. The Torah was in the world. The Torah was in the world. And the world came to be through him. Yes, it did. Yes, it did. I pray that you understand that Torah means instruction. And Torah ut means instructions. And so when Abba in the beginning spoke instruction, that which wasn't came to be. It had to obey him. It had to obey him. Indeed, when he spoke the son, the Shamash, into existence and commanded him and commanded it to operate in accordance with his course. Barak Yahuwah, what did, the, what did the Shamash do? It obeyed its instruction. And it continues to obey its instruction, his instruction. And it neither, the son, it neither now turns to the right or to the left of the eternal command that he gave it. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Barak Yahuwah. So the Torah was in the beginning. He was in the world. The Torah was in the world. And the world came to be through him, through Torah. And the world did not know him, did not know Torah. Indeed, the world still doesn't know Torah. If you don't know Torah, you don't know him because he is Torah. He came to his own. He came to his own and his own did not receive him. What does it mean here? By meaning that he came to his own. It was, it was Yahshua all whom he gave the Torah to. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. He didn't give the Torah to any other people. He gave the Torah to Yahshua all. Yet, yet to the people to whom he gave Torah to didn't recognize the Torah when it came to them, or when he came to them. This is what he's saying. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And when he sends servants, whom he has put his Torah in, and whom he speaks Torah through, you don't understand because you don't know him. You don't understand because you don't know Torah. You're always looking for the deep matters. You're looking for the deep matters. And, and knowledge is your Allahim. Knowledge is your Elohim, and he rejects you because of your puffed up, stinky pride. He rejects you. He rejects you because you don't come to him childlike, looking for the deep matters, stumbling over books when you come in the house, instead of desiring the pure, unadulterated milk of the word. He rejects you. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. The simple matters is where the deep things are revealed. The simple matters. And having a childlike mind, these are the ones in whom he reveals the ancient path to. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. He came to his own. He, the Torah, came to those to whom the Torah was given to. And his own, those who he gave the Torah to, did not receive him, did not receive the Torah. No, they didn't. No, they didn't. If, if they had known the Torah... If they had known the pure, unadulterated milk of the word, if they had known the Torah, they would have known him. Yes, they would have. Yes, they would have. But you see, they were more concerned with the deep matters. Yes, they were. Yes, they were. They were more concerned with the commands and doctrines of men. They were more concerned with adding to and taking away from the Torah. Yes, they were. Yes, they were. They were more concerned with these things than the pure, unadulterated milk of the Torah, which is where you will find him. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. But as many as received him, received who? The Torah. To them, he gave the authority to become children of Elohim. How do we become children of Elohim? He's the living Torah. 
He's the living Torah. And so if you receive Torah, then you become children of Elohim. You too then should what? Should become living Torahs. Yes, you should. Yes, you should. You should become a living Torah. You should become a living light in which he uses to draw the nations out of darkness like moths are drawn to candles and which he uses to reconcile the remnant of Adam back to himself. Indeed. If we're living Torahs, then we ought to teach them Torah. We ought to give them words of life. Yes, we should. Yes, we should. We ought to give them words of life. We ought to give them the Torah. We ought to teach them the ancient past. Yes, we should. Yes, we should. We ought to teach them the ancient past. To those believing in his name, who were born, not of blood, nor of the desire of flesh, nor of the desire of man, but of Elohim. He is not flesh and blood. He is Ruach. He is Ruach. He is not flesh and blood. And so when we are born of him, we become living Torahs. Why? Because the Torah is now written upon our hearts. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And the word and the Torah and the Torah became flesh and pitched his tent among us. Now, if you can receive this, if you can understand this, and I'm talking simple matters. I'm not talking deep matters. I'm just talking simple matters because Abba speaks to me in simple ways. I'm just speaking. Now, the, the Torah became flesh uh, in the person of Yahushua HaMashiach, who came not as the literal son of Yahuwah, because he was Yahuwah in flesh. He came as a representation of us, of us. And so what does that mean? When we become born from above, what does that mean? The Torah should become flesh. Yes, it should. Yes, it should. The Torah should become flesh and pitch its tent amongst men. Yes, it should. Yes, it should. But see, this is hidden from you because you're looking for the deep matters. You're looking for the deep things. And you're not satisfied with the pure, unadulterated, simple milk of the word. And he rejects your filthy pride. He, reflect, he rejects your knowledge because knowledge has become your mighty one. Yes, it has. Yes, it has. And the word, the Torah, became flesh and pitched his tent among us. And if we are born of him, we become living Torahs. And in us, the Torah becomes flesh. Yes, it does. This is what he wants. He ain't looking for no letter. He's looking for living Torahs. He's looking for the Torah to become flesh. He's looking for the Torah to become flesh so that we can walk the ancient path. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. He ain't look, he, he's, not, he's not looking for the letter. He doesn't care about your knowledge. He's looking for living Torahs. Living Torahs. Living tabernacles. This is who he wants to use. Babes. Babies. Looking for the pure, unadulterated milk of the word. So that he can fill us. So that he can fill us with the word. So that he can fill us with his rock. The living Torah. So that, we can be, so that we can become living Torah, so that the Torah becomes flesh in us like it became flesh in him. This is what he's asking of us. This is what he's calling for us to do. And we saw his esteem, the esteem of an only brought forth of a father. Indeed, if you can receive it, that's who Yahshua is. We are his Yaquim. We are his only begotten son. We are the only brought forth of the father. And we are supposed to display his esteem. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. So that he is esteemed through us. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Complete in favor and truth. What is truth? Truth is Torah. Truth is Torah. Truth is Torah. Barak Yahuwah. Barak Yahuwah. Barak Yahuwah. We're not done. He says, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the Kai. I am the life. I am the life. What is life? What is the life? Turn to Aikra. Uikra, Leviticus chapter 18. Uikra. Uikra. Leviticus chapter 18. Barak Yahuwah. Thank you, Abba. I give you all esteem. I'm just a baby. I don't know anything. I know nothing. I don't know nothing. You teach me. You speak through me. You show me the deep things and the simple matters. And the simple matters. Mm -hmm. 
Barak Yahuwah, and the pure, unadulterated milk of the word. Uikra Leviticus chapter 18, verse 1 through 5. Verse 1 through 5. And Yahuwah spoke to Masha, saying, Speak to the children of Yashua'al and say to them, I am Yahuwah, your Elohim. Do not do as they do in the land of Masra'im, where you dwell. And do not do as they do in the land of Kana'an, where I am bringing you. And do not walk in their laws. Do my right rulings. Do my right rulings. Do my right rulings. Does not say here, do my deep things. Look for the deep things. It says, do my right rulings. And guard my laws. It doesn't say. And guard my deep things. And guard my laws. To walk in them. To walk in them. He says my burden is light. My yoke is easy. And my burden is light. If we just. If we just. Just, just thirst. For the pure. Unadulterated milk of the word. His burden. His yoke is easy. And his burden is light. Searching for the deep things. The deep things are revealed in the simple things. Because everything of Abba is deep. To us it is. To walk in them. To walk in them. Just walk in obedience. Just walk in his word. Stop looking for the deep stuff. Just walk in his word. And I draw your attention to walk. Walk what? The ancient path. Walk the ancient path. Walk in his word. The, word. the word here says that in the beginning was the Torah. In the beginning was the Torah. This is the ancient path. This is the ancient path. To walk in them. I am Yahuwah, your Elohim. And you shall guard my laws and my right rulings, which a man does and lives by them. I am Yahuwah. Torah is the light. Torah is the life. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He is the Torah. He is the Torah. Barak Yahuwah. Deuteronomy chapter 30. Deuteronomy chapter 30. Barak Yahuwah. Deuteronomy chapter 30. Dabarim chapter 30. Let me know when we get five minutes of. Deuteronomy, Dabarim, chapter 30, verse 1 through 10, verses 1 through 10. Dabarim, Deuteronomy, chapter 30, verses 1 through 10. And it shall be when all these words come upon you, the Barakah and the curse, which I, have, which I have placed before you, and you shall bring them back to your heart among all the nations where Yahuwah, your Alakim, drives you. And shall turn back, Tashuba, repent to Yahuwah, your Elohim, and obey his voice, his Torah, according to all that I command you today, with all your heart and with all your being, you and your children, then Yahuwah, your Elohim, shall turn back your captivity. Not when you find the deep things. Not when you find the deep things. Not when you've mastered the ivory tongue or the Greek tongue. Not when, not when uh, you, you've, you've read all the existing scrolls and books. But when you turn back to the ancient path, when you turn back to Torah, then Yahuwah, your Elohim, shall turn back your captivity and shall have compassion on you. And he shall turn back and gather you from all the peoples where Yahuwah your Elohim has scattered you. If any of you are driven out to the farthest parts under the Shamayim, from there Yahuwah your Elohim does gather you. And from there he does take you. And Yahuwah your Elohim shall bring you to the land which your fathers possessed. And you shall possess it. And he shall do good to you. And increase you more than your fathers. And Yahuwah your Elohim shall circumcise your wicked heart. And the heart of your seed. And the only way for this to be accomplished is for the living Torah to come in. And to make his home in our hearts. 
whereby we become living Torahs. We become living Torahs, whereby the Torah is made flesh in us. To love Yahuwah, your Allah with all your heart and with all your being. I'm going to read that again. To love Yahuwah, your Allah with all your heart and with all your being, so that you might live. And Yahuwah, your Allah shall put all these curses on your enemies. And on those who hate you, who persecuted you. And you shall turn back, Tashuba, and obey the voice of Yahuwah, and obey Torah, and do all his commands which I command you today. And Yahuwah, your Elohim, shall make you have excess in all the work of your hand, and the fruit of your body, and in the fruit of your livestock, and in the fruit of your ground for good. But Yahuwah turns back to celebrate over you for good as he celebrated over your fathers. If, if, if you obey the voice of Yahuwah, the, if you obey the voice of Yahuwah who was from the beginning, who is everlasting, if you obey who is the living Torah and who is, and who is from the beginning, who has no beginning and no end, who is the ancient path. If you obey the voice of Yahuwah, which is Torah, your Elohim, to guard his commands, to guard his commands, not to seek the deep matters, to guard his commands and his laws, which are written in this book of the Torah, which are written in this book of the Torah. If you turn back to Yahuwah, your Elohim, with all your heart and with all your being. Barak Yahuwah. Go down to verse 11, same chapter. Verse 11, same chapter. Verse 11 through 20. Verse 11 through 20. For this is the command which I am commanding you today. It is not too hard for you, nor is it for off. It is not in the Shamayim to say, who shall ascend into the Shamayim for us and bring it to us and cause us to hear it so that we do it. Nor is it beyond the sea to say, who shall go over the sea for us and bring it to us and cause us to hear it so that we do it. For the word is very near you. It's near to some of us. It's near to some of us. If it is written on the heart, it's, written, it's, it's near to some of us. Some it is not near to, because knowledge is your Elohim. Some it is not near to you, because you don't take this seriously. You don't take it seriously. It's just something to do. It's just a social gathering. It's just something to do. And so the word is near to some of us. But for the majority, it is not near them. It's not near them, because it has not been written upon their heart. The living Torah has not been written upon their heart because they come to him puffed up. He resists the proud. He still resists the proud. He receives the meek and the humble. Indeed, the meek shall inherit the earth. These are those, the lowly, the lowborn. These are the ones in whom he receives and these are the ones in whom he reveals deep matters to and the, and the simple things and the pure, unadulterated milk of the word. These are the ones in whom he receives. For the word is very near you, in your mouth and in your heart, to do it. See, I have set before you today life, life, the Torah is life, the Torah is life. Yahushua declared, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the way and the truth and the life. See, I have set before you today life and good, death and evil. And that I am commanding you today to love Yahuwah, your Allah, to walk. The operative word again here is walk to walk what? His ways. What is the way? Indeed, when we read the Greek in John 14, the way is a road. The way is a path. The way is the ancient path. It is the ancient path. And that I am commanding you today to love Yahuwah, your Allah, to walk in his ways, not to walk in the deep things. Not to walk in the deep matters. 
to walk in his ways and to guard his commands. Just try doing this. Try the simple things. Try the simple things and, 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 and try not to look for a platform. Look for the simple matters. Come to him with a childlike abandon and look for the simple matters and allow him to teach you the deeper things hidden in the simple matters. In the simple matters. To walk in his ways, to walk the ancient path and to guard his commands and his laws and his right rulings. Simply, simply, indeed, his yoke is easy and his burden is light. And his burden is light. And you shall live and increase. And Yahuwah your Elohim shall barak you in the land which you go to possess. But if your heart turns away and you do not obey and shall be drawn away and shall bow down to other mighty, mighty ones and serve them. I have declared to you today that you shall certainly perish. You shall not prolong your days in the land which you are passing over the yard and to enter and possess. Indeed, Mespaka, if we simply get back to the ancient path, if we sim simply get back to the way, which is Torah, which is the light, which shines light on darkness, listen, there is no need for us to have a knowledge of the esoteric matters. There is no need for us to have a knowledge of the esoteric matters. If we simply get back to the pure, unadulterated milk of the word, then what? The light is going to keep us away from those matters. It's going to shine light on those and keep us away from them. So <clears throat> we have been commanded to what? To not learn the ways of the heathen. To not even learn their ways. We have been commanded through his servant Sha'al. To not even speak of the works of darkness. It is shameful to speak about what they do in darkness. Sometimes we have to bring attention to it. To bring light to it. In order to tear down standing stones. But this should not be, this should not be our focus. Many, many have this focus because they're looking for the deep matters. And they're looking for a platform. But if we simply got back to the basics, to the ancient path, to the pure, unadulterated milk of the word, we, his people, would put Hashatan out of business. He would be put out of business. If we just got, came back to the light, to the pure, unadulterated milk of the word, and just simply did what it told us to do, we would put Hashatan out of business. We would put him out of business. But instead, the people of the earth are making them rich. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. I call your attention to when Yahusha was on the mountain and Hashatan was tempting him. And he told him if he would bow down to him that he would give him all the, all the earth. He would give him all the possessions of the earth, all the reins of the earth because it had been given to him. It was in his power to give because it had been given to him. So the people of the earth are making them rich. They're making them rich. Adam made him rich. Adam made him rich. Yes, he did. Adam made him rich. Adam was rich. Adam was born rich. He was born as a sovereign. He was born as a ruler. But when he obeyed Hashatan, he turned over that rulership to him and he made him rich. He made him rich. And so now the people of the earth continue to make him rich. Continue to make him rich. If we would simply turn back to the light, to the pure, unadulterated, milk of the word, we would put him out of business. We would, make his, we would make his riches obsolete. We would make everything that he offers obsolete. And you know what else? We would usher in the reign, the millennial reign. Yes, we would. Yes, we would. We would usher in the millennial reign because it is written when we repent back to Torah, back to the ancient path, then he will reverse our captivity. That's what the text says. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. I have called the Shamayim and the earth as witness today against you. I have placed before you life and death. Indeed, he says, I am the way and the truth and the life, the Barakah and the curse. 